Welcome to SCCA F9 Financial Management. I'm called John Intende and I'll be your tutor throughout this session. You can reach me on john.intende at gmail.com and on mobile number 0788-437543. You can also find us at Management and Financial College. Our offices are at Teacher's House on Bombo Road or on website www.mafuganda.com. So what we're going to look at today is a brief introduction to paper F9, that is uh, financial management. Okay, we shall begin by looking at the exam layout. Now, briefly, the exam structure. The paper is made up of four compulsory questions, each carrying 25 marks. The total time allowed is 3 hours 15 minutes. The 15 minutes is reading time, and you will not be allowed to write anything in your answer booklet. Obviously, the pass mark is 50%. So anything below that, you'll have to redo the exam. The exam is 50% written bits and 50% calculations. Now your examiner has clearly mentioned that most students fail because they do not know how to do the written bits. So it's important to understand the theory. It's important to know how to do the numbers. But most important, you need to be able to interpret the numbers. Okay, let's move on. Briefly, let's look at the syllabus, the F9 syllabus. Now, the first part is investment appraisal. Now, later on, I'll tell you what F9 is all about. But investment appraisal is basically you want to, let's say, put up a building, okay, a commercial building and you want to earn rent so investment appraisal the different techniques you can use to see if that venture is going to be profitable in the short run and in the long run so by having all these techniques we're able to come up with a reasonable uh, judgment as to whether this project will be successful or not the next part of the syllabus is called working capital management. Now, working capital is basically your current assets, which is cash, inventory, receivables, less your current liabilities, usually just the payables. So it's important to manage working capital to meet the liquidity requirements, that's the daily payments, the monthly payments, e.g. salary, and the profitability requirements, which are usually long term in nature so as a finance manager you need to be able to balance those two objectives liquidity having enough cash to meet your daily operations as well as profitability being able to invest in long-term projects to make money for the shareholders now the next part of the syllabus is called business finance to invest, you need money to do that. So business finance, we shall look, be looking at the different sources of finance. So we shall be looking at things like bank loans, things like shares, and things like bonds. So we shall be looking at which is the most appropriate source of finance for a given company under different circumstances. The next part is called dividend policy. Now, a business exists to make money principally for its shareholders. So, dividend policy seeks to understand which to answer two questions. Should we give, redistribute the profits or should we invest these profits back into the company? So, dividend policy, we are trying to answer those two questions. Next is risk management. Here we are going to be looking at interest rate risk and foreign exchange rate risk. 
and then we have something called cost of capital. So for instance, if you take out a loan, the cost of capital on that loan is the interest you pay back. And finally, we have business valuation. So here we're trying to attach a value to the business. So there are several techniques we're going to use to evaluate the business. Now let's move on to the next slide. We need to understand the financial objectives of the company. Now there are three key objectives for any company. The first one is to maximize profits. Now profits is simply your sales less your expenses for a given period. Then we need to optimize the earnings per share growth. And finally, we need to maximize shareholder wealth. By shareholder wealth, we mean the share price and the dividends. So you can see, once we maximize profits, then the earnings per share will go up. And then, of course, the share price and the dividends will also go up because of the increased profitability. So whenever we talk about the key objectives, the key financial objectives of any company, we're talking about maximizing profits, optimizing the earnings per share growth, and then maximizing shareholder wealth. In F9, shareholder wealth means the share price growth and the dividends paid to the shareholders. Okay. So what is F9 all about? F9 is all about three key things. One is investment. In the previous slide, we mentioned that the key objective of a business is to maximize shareholder wealth. We do that by investing in profitable projects. So the first key thing is we need to invest. But we also need to look for financing to fund the investment. So we need to invest. We need to look for finance to invest. And finally, we need to give back to the shareholder through dividend policy. So whenever someone mentions F9, you should be thinking investment. You should be thinking financing. And you should be thinking dividend policy. Okay. Briefly, investment can be short term. For instance, shares and fixed deposits. I'm very sure you know what shares are. I'm very sure you know what fixed deposits are. Or it could be long term. For instance, plant property and equipment. For instance, land or commercial buildings. Or it could be bonds. Bonds is simply long term debt. Financing. The three key sources of finance we're going to focus on are bonds. Now, bonds is simply long-term debt. So, bonds means the same thing as loan notes. It means the same thing as debentures. It means the same thing as loan stock. They are all forms of long-term debt. They are usually secured. That means there is collateral attached to them. The interest is paid annually or semi-annually in most cases. So bonds could be corporate bonds or they could be government bonds. Then we have equity. Equity is simply shares. Shares, ordinary share capital. So that's what equity is all about. It's about share capital. And then finally, we have banks. So we have various forms of financing which are accessible from banks. For instance, a Barclays Bank. Dividend policy. Two key questions we need to answer relating to dividend policy. One, should we distribute the profits to the shareholders? And if we are distributing the profits to the shareholders, how much, what percentage are we distributing to them? Or should we reinvest these profits 
back into the business. So there are various theories to explain which is the best option to take. And we shall look at this when we look at dividend policy in detail. And to end it all, F9 we've mentioned is about investment. Investment could be short term, it could be long term. We need to look for finance to fund the investment. The three key sources of finance are bonds, equity and bank financing. And finally we need to pay back to the shareholder. The key question to ask is how much profits should we distribute back or should we reinvest the profits? Okay, thanks guys for listening to me. I hope you find this helpful. Please give me some feedback on how best to improve this uh, presentation. You can find my contact details in the first slide. And uh, I need to revise a lot to be able to make it in F9. You should use this presentation as a revision guide, but don't forget to attend class. Don't forget to read your text and your exam kit. Make sure you do a lot of question practice. Of course, you need to read the examiner's articles and the examiner's reports for all the papers, F9 papers in the recent past. F9 is an exciting subject. If you are interested in the professional papers, you can go on to do P4, which is Advanced Financial Management. Okay, let's meet next time. Thank you.